Hi, I'm Wallace Kelly, and I'd like to show you the power of reflection in the .NET framework. And the way that I'm going to do that is by building a simple, pluggable architecture where I can add additional functionality to an application at runtime. Now to do that, I'm going to go through and look at a couple of methods on the assembly class. The assembly class is a reflection class that gives us information about our DLLs. And then I'm going to talk about the type class, and we'll see all the information that you can get about your classes and your enums and your structs that are contained in an assembly. And then lastly, we're going to look at the activator class, which is a way to create instances of object based on type information. Instead of saying new class name, we can call activator.createInstance. And this is called late bound activation. All right, so let's go back to the big idea, showing the power of reflection by building a simple, pluggable architecture. Let me show you the goal. Let me show you what we're working towards. Here I have an application called Image App, and what it does is it brings up a little uh, WPF application that shows an image, and then I have a couple of buttons here for manipulating that image. Now what, you, what you'll notice is that right now there's only two buttons. What I'd like to do is be able to add new functionality, add additional buttons, simply by dropping a DLL into a plugins folder. So I'm going to do that right now. If I go here into my plugins and I paste in a file called imageprocessors.dll, so this is a, a DLL that has in it classes that implement my image processing interface, which I'll show you in a minute. So I drop that DLL into my plugins folder, and now when I run image app, Without having to recompile, the application looks in the plugins folder. It finds these additional image processors, things like Blur and Pixelate. And then now my application has a simple, pluggable architecture. So that's what we're working towards. So to do that, I have my application. It has a load filters method which returns an array of an interface. Now this is an important part of building a pluggable application, is that you need some kind of an interface that classes that you're going to want to create an instance of at runtime, the, you need an interface that those classes can implement. And for me, it's just a simple I image processor interface that I wrote myself. It has a name, which is what appears in the button, and then it has an apply method, which takes in an image and returns an image after applying that image filter. Right now, I have two filters hard-coded into the application, and those are the two buttons we saw initially, Reset and Rotate. But what I'd like to do is use Reflection and Late-Bound Activation to find, create, and add additional filters from the Plugins folder. So let's just go through the steps of doing that. The first thing that I have to do is find all the files in my Plugins folder. So I'll just do a for each, for each file in directory, get files, so I'm only interested in the DLL files that are in the plugins, and uh, well let's just do a quick test to make sure that I got that right, so console right line. There we go. And so I found three DLLs there, and you can see that my image processor's DLL is based on AForge. Uh, so I already have my image processor DLL that has the filters in it, and I want to look in there, pull those filters out, and add them to my application. All right, so I found those files. Now what I need to do is I'm going to use the assembly class. And so the assembly class is a reflection class that gives you access to... Um, information about assemblies. Many methods on there, you can look at those later, but the one I'm going to look, uh, use is load from. And so I need to load from the file, and that will return a reference to information about this assembly. And it turns out that for this demo, I need to prepend the full directory name, like so. And now I've loaded up information about my assembly. Now I want to look at all the types that are in my assembly. And to do that, I can use the method called getTypes. So given an assembly, I want to know what are all the types in that assembly. 
And so let's go ahead and I'll just print those out. Print out type full name just to see how I'm doing. Just to do a quick test. And you can see I'm getting many, many methods that are in these assemblies. I don't want to create instances of all of these. I only want to create instances of the ones that implement my interface I image processor. So I need to look on type. And if I look on type, I can find that there are, again, many methods. And one of them is get interfaces. And this returns an array of all the interfaces that my type implements. So if I look in that array and see if it contains a particular interface, notice here that contains, uh, it's looking in this collection. So this collection is a collection of types. So I need to get the type I image processor. It won't work to do simply that. That's what you might expect. But uh, that, that doesn't work. What you do is you use the type of type of operator, and the type of operator says give me a type, an instance of type that matches this symbolic name. So if that type implements that interface, then that's what I would like to create an instance of. So once again, I just want to run this and just see how I'm doing. Got to match my braces. There we go. So now I have found five classes in my plugins folder that implement iImage Processor. So now the last step is to create instances of those classes. So filter. Oh, now see, here's where I get to. I can't say type, but that's basically what I want to do is I want to create a new instance of this type. And there is a class for doing that called activator. Activator dot uh, create instance. And you see that one of the overloads takes a type. So please, I'm saying saying to .NET, please create an instance of whatever this type is. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that uh, create instance returns an object. And what I'm expecting is that this is um, an I image processor, that it implements that interface. So I want to cast it as such so that filter will be of the right type. And then I'll just simply add it to my collection of filters. The rest of the program takes care of adding the buttons and calling the filters and so forth. The focus right now is on building this pluggable architecture using reflection. And sure enough, now I can have these additional buttons for manipulating my image. Just one final demonstration. Uh, here's another, let's see, go to it before. Here's the plugins folder. Let me just, uh, I have another DLL called More Filters. So I'll drop that in bin debug plugins. So I drop more filters in there. And now watch. Run it again. And now I have oil painting as yet another filter. All right. So what we've done is we've looked at the, the power of reflection by building a simple pluggable architecture. And to do that, I use three classes. I use the assembly class, which would load in an assembly off my hard drive. I use the type class, which um, the assembly class gave me a list of all the types in there. And then the type class could give me information about those types. And then lastly, I use the activator class for late bound activation, meaning create an instance of this thing that I may not have known about at compile time. At runtime, I would like to create an instance of that. Hope, hope this is useful and hope you get a chance to try it out yourself.